Well, here we go. The Hunting Land Man podcast, the first one of 2024. I I was about to look this up, Caleb. What what podcast is this? Is it about 24? I mean, about 44, excuse me? Uh, no, I'm going to say it's like 49. Let's see here. My guess is 48 or 49. All right, 48 or 49. All right, anyway, we're somewhere right around 50. We'll have to look that up because we'll have to have 50th episode anniversary. All right. Today we wanted to talk about being that it's January the 3rd and our predictions for the 2024 market. Before we get too far, as always, in 2022 and 2023 and 2024, uh, this podcast is brought to you by Southern Ag Credit. Um Alex and Austin and all the guys over at Southern Ag take such good care of us. I've got a couple of deals going on with them right now um, with some clients of mine, and they always take good care of us. And what we're talking about today about the market is going to involve them heavily and other banks, too. There's great other banks, too. All right, so market predictions for 2024. We got Rack, the Rackbuck Realtor, Caleb, uh, everybody had a good Christmas. Caleb, y'all had a good Christmas? We had a great Christmas, man. We uh, went home to Monroe, saw my family, went to Lafayette, saw Claire's family. and uh, Something happened while you were there, too. We did, yeah. Yeah, and I guess by the time this comes out, the world will know. But uh, No, I, I, I was talking about the the, uh, the deer. Oh, yeah. I did smack one upside the head, or upside the shoulder, I guess. And the hog in the head. Yeah, I did shoot the hog right in the top of the head. Tell us, before we get into the market predictions, tell us a little bit, just a quick, about that hunt, where you killed and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so I grew up, um, we hunted a lot of public land out of necessity growing up, and uh, one of the places that I started hunting a little later on was with a buddy of mine, a teammate at UL. We hunted in the Tensaw National Wildlife Refuge, and uh, so they've got a camp right there on the river, and we've hunted ton of different areas on the refuge and a couple years ago we started hunting a new area and so we went down uh scouted around a little bit and we've had luck in this spot before and i had a good hunt that morning saw a bigger deer than the deer that i shot and uh got down went and sat up against a tree ate some lunch i got back in the stand at probably two o'clock and right away i heard something behind me some hogs came through so turned around finally got a shot at them shot one literally right below my tree in the top of the head and it ran off about 30 yards and died about 10 minutes later i heard something behind me and i turned around and thought the hogs were coming back and i just saw a rack flash over, over the palmettas i mean it's a palmetto jungle you can barely see all you can see is the horns sometimes and so i started getting ready of course he's straight downwind and i'm thinking okay there's absolutely no way this is going to work out and um so he he is just barely taking a step every you know, 10 or so seconds, and then he just lays down. And he's 70 yards from me, and I'm just looking at him. And he's just laying down. That, like, adds to the heartbeat factor. It was horrible. Because you, you had to think about it so much. Yeah, and and I'm just thinking, man, what can I do? And luckily, he was behind a tree, so I got away with some movement, you know, for the camera and everything. I had to take the camera off the camera arm so that I could get some footage of him behind the tree because where the arm was was too low mm-hmm. to get him. So, self film problems and he got good really good video of the hunt yeah yeah it ended up working out good thank god um but finally about an hour later about four forty-five, he stood up and uh started heading my way i went to grab my range finder didn't have my range finder and i said oh my god i didn't have it in general no didn't have it i was supposed to follow them in my truck and i have two range finders in my truck and mm. i had taken them out of my pockets and didn't realize it um so I just said, well, he looks to be about 32, 33. So I put it on about 30, and I said, well, he'll duck into it. And he ended up being a little bit further than that. But it worked out, and uh, smoked him. He ran off, got him on film, falling over about 30 yards. And and y'all will see, <coughs> whenever we do the episode, Caleb was a little bit excited. There's oh, some yeah. Brock Lesnar talk, some Oklahoma drill talk. Yeah, I challenged Brock Lesnar to an Oklahoma <laughs> drill without shoulder pads. And with that much adrenaline, he may have got the best of me, but I wouldn't have felt it. Oh, yeah, that definitely. It's uh, it's that, uh, what would I say the other day when you sent that to me? It's that post rack buck smoke. You don't yeah. want none of that post rack buck uh-uh. smoke. Uh uh-uh. uh. Not an Oklahoma drill, you don't. That's right. Anytime. I mean, you can run through a brick wall after you shoot a big yep. gobbler or an elk or a deer. That's right. I mean, or a turkey, excuse me. All right, we're going to the 2024 market predictions. All right, so let's talk, let's bring, go through to 2023 and talk about the market, 
what happened. Um, you know, things were so crazy during COVID, uh, 2020, 2021, 2022, that, you know, our usual market, I've been doing this 17 years, so I, I know the usual market. We usually slow down May to late July, August. Uh, a lot of our clients out of Louisiana are fishing or baseballing or vacation, and, and people just aren't thinking about hunting. Yeah. A lot of people think that's when they would buy, but it's not the case. Yeah, it's not on their mind. If You know, you, you go and do whatever you think about, and they're mm-hmm. just not thinking about that. They've got other priorities, other things that they're focused on, and um, they're just not thinking about hunting. They're not thinking about a deer. And um, so anyway, we, in 2023, I think was the first time we saw maybe a little summer lull that is normal. Mm-hmm. Interest rates were high. Washington was being crazy. End of the world, World War Three, all this kind of stuff. And um, but I don't. It's like at the end of the summer. I'm going to say September. Everybody kind of got over it because uh, our inventory picked up a little bit during the summer, and all of a sudden, like we're almost out of inventory again. All of our listings sold. Listings that had been sitting there a while. Even listings that we have had not a lot of activity on all of a sudden started getting a lot of activity. And now if you look around in the areas we sell, East and West Feliciana, uh, Amet, Wilkeson County, Adams, Jefferson, if you got a million, two million, three million dollars, there ain't a lot out there. No, there ain't a lot out there really at any price points. You know, like in Northeast Louisiana, there's hardly, I mean, I've got buyers like crazy and it, I, I, I can't find anything that's a good fit. And so, so if you call Caleb or I right now or anybody with Southern States or any agent in general and, and they say, well, send me some properties and they send you two or three, guess what? They send you everything. Yeah. Like it's yeah. not a lot out there. I've got several $2 million to $5 million clients right now, which we're very blessed to have. And there ain't a lot out there to show them. Usually you got that much money in your pocket, man, we can go look at some stuff. Man. Right. But it ain't a whole lot out there to show them now. I've already seen an increase in the first three days, and you definitely yesterday, people talking about selling, people talking about buying, people talking about upgrading, people talking about downgrading, which we kind of thought would happen. It usually happens every year. Well, and we're getting towards the end of deer season, too. You know, a lot of people right. want to hang on to their place at least till the end of the season. Like, I, I've got a guy who told me, he said, look, man, let me just have one more duck season, and I'm really going to consider selling. You know, and, and that's, that's pretty common. Right across the river. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. pretty common. Yeah, and, and so if you are thinking about selling, if you're one of our listeners who's thinking about selling, if you call us today and let's say best case scenario, we'll get your property on the market next week, it's not going to close till after the season. So exactly. take advantage of this, what's happening good right now and get your property on the market. Historically, February has always been one of my best months. What happens, people uh, still thinking about hunting. They had a good season uh, and they want to, you know, they had a good season somewhere and they want to buy a bigger piece of property or they had a bad season or they tired of hunting clubs yeah. or they just said, I'm getting me a place. It's time. Yeah. And so uh, people are doing that. They're not vacationing a lot and stuff like that unless they're snow skiing and and then uh, it also, March, April is usually pretty good, too. All right, so why Caleb and I, well, let me ask this first. I'm going to say my predictions, and just short predictions, and then, Caleb, you can say yours. I think 2024 is going to go crazy. I think we're going to see an increase in prices. Now, I'm not going to say we'll have another COVID event. I just think with the low inventory, interest rates are planning to go down, which we're going to talk about that. That's why I th- we think that market's going to go up. Low inventory, high demand. People are still trying to get out the city. Um, you know, m- being through COVID, we had what was called the great migration, is people realized they didn't have to be in an office to work. Mm-hmm. So now with Zoom and the way everybody communicates, um, you know, they can live in Centerville, Mississippi, Woodville, yeah. or St. Francisville, and not have to be in Baton Rouge or New Orleans. And so that's happening. It's still happening more and more. I mean, look, the stuff in West Feliciana, I mean, name your price. It's literally yeah. uh, four acres sold for 40000 an acre the other day. Well, demand is just that high for that area, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, it, and we've got we got a good uh, twenty three acres for sale yeah. down there, and it's bad. It's a beautiful home site. If you're looking for a place to build a house, yeah, it's a good spot. It is. It really is. And Caleb knows that area good because he used to live right there. But anyway, I think you know when you, 
who knows what's going on with this election and all, but I think when you get right around the election, it may slow down a little bit. Hey, everybody's just kind of sitting on right. pause, see what happens. Right. But I think it will be blowing and going, you know, for the first two quarters. Yeah. That's my that that's my predictions because I'm gonna read you what uh, this is on Forbes. So this isn't uh, Slade Priest Media. This is I've got Forbes pulled up too. Ah, uh-huh. all right. National Association of Realtors Chief Economicus Lauren Yun. More, this is what she said. Or he Lawrence? Yeah, he. Mortgage rates look to head towards seven percent. They're over eight right now. In a few months, and to be in the six range by spring of 2024. Spring of 2024 is almost here. Yeah, and uh, in fact, and as we told y'all this before, but um, so let's just look at it right now. Right now, if you get a loan with Southern Ag, let's say your interest rate eight percent, and I'm, I, I, you know, I don't know what your interest rate will be, but it should be somewhere around there with good credit. All right, you're going to get one percent back a year, so your effective rate with any of the land banks, is going to be 7% right now, about 7%. Okay, now, let's say you are looking to buy right now, and we close in March. According to what we're reading right here, your interest rate is going to head to 7 which it, with Southern Ag, you'll be at 6 because your effective rate will be 1% lower. Right. And if we get to the 6 range, your effective rate is going to be 5 which is what all the economists are saying. I'll read you another one. Um RSM U.S. real estate senior analyst Crystal Sun- Sunbury, assuming no s- significant economic shock, mortgage rates will likely continue to slowly ease over the next few months. Oh, my computer timed out. To reach six to six and a half, six and a half percent range by 2024. All right, there's another one. Um, Mortgage Bankers Association. They should know what they're talking about. That's the one that's most appealing to me. Whenever I'm looking at all of the same stuff right. that you're looking at. Um, baseline forecast mortgage rates to end 2024 at six point one, uh, and reach five point five by the end of 2025. Okay, so you're right. so if you're if you are um if you're if your loans with Southern Ag Credit or any other land bank, as these interest rates come down, your interest rate will come down. They will write your loan down for free. It didn't cost you any money. As soon as it goes down a quarter, half a point, they come find you, sign a piece of paper, and your interest rate's down. So why would you, if you're sitting out there and you're saying, okay, I'm gonna wait till it gets at five and a half in 2025. Let me tell you why that's a bad idea. And you can put this on your Instagram reel because this is real stuff here. If we see interest rates go down below six or, or even in the low sixes, and your effective rate is lower than that, one of the land banks, prices are gonna go up. Mark it down. Prices we have a low inventory. High demand in our area. Prices are going to go up. People are going to say, oh, man, we got low interest rates again. I better buy. So if you buy right now, you'll get that lower interest rate when it gets there. But I don't think your prices are going to be where they're going to be by 2025. I predict 5000 an acre in Wilkeson and some of the better parts of Amick County and definitely in Adams County by 2025. It's going to become a common thing. A year and a half ago, I said a common thing in Wilkeson County was going to be four thousand an acre, and we're here. We're way over that. Yeah, and I've got I've got one um, closing Friday right now that is five thousand an acre, and it is above what it appraised for. But now it will be a comp, and if you're looking for stuff in this area right now, there's nothing for sale. So you may, you know, you you you'll probably want to pay that. So to summarize that, prices are going to go up. Through 2024 and 25, 2025, pending no economic disaster or something. And right now, if you get your interest rate locked in, let's say at seven or eight, and then it goes down, your interest rate will go down. So prices will, I'm not God and, and I, don't, I don't know the future, but prices will on land, if it goes like history, will never be lower than they are right now. So the time to buy land is. To five years ago, but today, yeah, as I, soon as possible. I wish I would have been uh, buying houses in the, you know, the eighth grade instead of messing around with girls and playing right, football right, right, and everything, yeah. you know. But no, not just when you when you all of what you said is true. But another way to look at it too, and just a different mindset to have um, from a buyer standpoint, 
you're going to have to compete on prices. So, yeah, it may cost you a few thousand dollars to pay a higher interest rate for 12 months, maybe 15 months, until you get to that rate that you want in refinance. But how many more tens of thousands of dollars is it going to cost you want to wait? And now you have to compete with other buyers and deal with other buyers' agents and running the price up. And that's going to ultimately, in the end, cost you more money. And more importantly, it may cost you the property that you want. That, that I was thinking my head was there, too. <laughs> if people, if it go, oh, when it goes crazy again, when these markets drop, you may have to settle for a property that you, I like it, but I wish I would have got this one. I'm, I'm telling you, like if I post something for sale in Adams, Wilkeson, good parts. Eight, like I, we're going to list one today. We've already got it. It's going to be, um, I'll just, a little less. Than, by the time this comes out, it's going to be 85 acres, A. Mick County, listed in the high threes. I predict it will last a week. I've got three people interested already. In the, it's Yeah, it's too good of a track, and it's in too good of an area. Mm-hmm. It's a highly desirable area. And... <laughs> It's anything that's good. If you're sitting out there and you see something that's listed and it's not selling, it's just it's probably a problem with it because stuff is selling right now. And I know if you listen to the news, gloom and doom and all that kind of stuff, I'm telling you, the land market is good. People are looking for places to recreate. People are looking for smaller acreage to build homes on. And it's not just hunting. Um in fact, the clients I was with yesterday, we were looking at some really big stuff, and they, they're they hunters, but they're more like a place for the family to come and recreate. I mean, I, you know, they're not they're not looking to kill a 150-inch deer. Great if they do, and there's a whole lot of those people out there, and they got people like the clients that are buying the place I was just talking about in Wilson County Friday. They hunt, but they're buying it because it has pretty creek frontage and year-round and a pretty camp and ponds. It's a... Uh, it's, it's a place to go get away and get away from the hustles and bustles of, of city life. And I think that has become, you know, we used to sell mo- mostly to hunters, but now people are seeing the benefits of that and how good it is for your soul every day. Yeah, people are getting back to reality. <coughs> and, and when I started in this, I thought, you know, I, I obviously I've been very fortunate to see some of the best properties in Mississippi and Louisiana and I've seen some properties that are absolutely beautiful, but maybe they don't have the best deer herd or the best turkey herd or the the best deer genetics, let me say. And I was just thinking, oh, man, no one's going to want this. You know, it's too much money and everything. But then the more and more people I meet, people are buying land for the right reasons. And that's that's pretty encouraging. And, And that's something that's so fulfilling for you and I, being able to help people whenever they're truly buying it for the right reasons. And even even if... They say, oh, you know, I want to kill a 150-inch deer every year. Talk to them a year later. See how much they hunted. Yeah. Yeah. This, see, see how important that still is to them. That's something, you know, people are buying. There's, oh, there's a lot more people out there that just want to hunt and recreate. Yeah, they want to kill a big deer. And what you can't do as an agent or just a, a landowner in general is look through your own lens. That's a problem that I had. Yeah. I thought everybody wants to shoot five year old deer with their bow and try to go to the biggest deer possible. Look, a lot, everybody wants to shoot big deer. Yeah. But some people, like my little boy, there's a picture somewhere in here. In, yeah, right there. On our place, the first buck he ever killed was a two year old eight point. And I wouldn't have it any other way. He saw it first. He wanted to shoot it. Boom. Now, I'm all about growing them big and I've made him do that since. But some people are just looking for a six point for their grandchild to get out the outdoors. My nephew, he's eleven, killed his first deer with my aunt dad last week. Little old bitty seven point. My dad said he was hyperventilating in the stand. John Nick lives in Baton Rouge, and you know he doesn't get to do what we did, did all growing up. My sister and uh, my uh, brother in law live in Baton Rouge, but he's crest interest in hunting, thankfully. And my uh, his grandpa, my dad, took him out. Killed his first buck, a seven point. Now, do you think John Nick would have been any more excited with 150? No. It's no different. It's all about the experience. It's it's all about the experience. Who you're with, uh, you know, the the feeling it gets you get. Um, That's it. It's all about that feeling you get when, and look, for me, 
that feeling takes a big mature deer. Well, it it's changed because yeah. when you were young, it wasn't that way. No, I just want to shoot every doe I saw. Right, and it's it 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 continues to change and evolve. You know, like my grandpa, he'd be good with never shooting another deer in his life as long as he can put people on them. Mm-hmm. You know, like he truly enjoys that. And I'll be honest with you, I grew up hunting public land, but I don't I don't enjoy it anymore. You know, mm-hmm. the only reason I do it is just so I can be with my friends that I grew up right. doing it with and take a step back into the way that I grew up. Um, but that's changed. You know, it used to be the only thing I wanted to do. Well, now, you know, I'm a little bit spoiled and I don't have to do that. And I enjoy not having to do that. But it takes you back to a memory that you grew up with. Mm-hmm. And it's changed over the years. But going back to what you were talking about with the seven point and everything and being pumped up, you know, the biggest tragedy a hunter can face is losing sight of why the animal exists in the first place. And I've said it on the podcast before. That animal represents a memory one way or another. That's why I like every deer I'll ever kill that has any form of rack, whether it's a 40-inch deer or a 140-inch deer, I'll keep those antlers because I want to see them and be reminded of where I was, what the air smelled like, you know, what what the scenery looked like, who I was with, and think back on that memory because one day you may not ever get to go back to that spot again. I thought about this, you know, like, when you're a dad and and y- y- y'all are <clears throat> both either are or, about, or will be dad soon, you know, think about well, you think about what it happens if something happened to you. Mm-hmm. You know, you th- I think about it all the time, and I've thought about it before. I was like, you know, Rafe wouldn't be able to grow up and me teach him how to hunt and stuff like that, which is like almost brings tears to my eyes even thinking it's about horrifying. something like that. Well, then I thought about you know one cool thing is like Bentley and Rafe and Asa like if some. Every deer that's on them wall in there is on video somewhere, yeah. And and that's and, and that's a pretty cool benefit I've got. I hadn't shot a buck off a camera in ten years or or more. Yeah, no, that is cool, and they'll enjoy that so much, mm-hmm. especially you know, not just ten years down the road, but think about like forty years down the road when you have grandkids. And right, th- that's going to be really cool, you know. It was uh, it's cool. Bentley downloaded the reveal app the other day. He wanted to, you know, he's getting. I'm trying to teach. I've been trying to get him. I said, Bentley, listen, you're not far away from. You need to start hunting some by yourself. Not that I don't want to hunt with you. It's just a responsibility thing. Sure. And so I've been trying to. Okay, I don't do anything with the gun. He loads the gun, unloads the gun, packs the gun, and all these, you know, safety things first, and then deer hunting things. Like mm-hmm. I tell him, he'll be playing on his phone. I'm like, hey. But you look, see if there's any deer out there. You know, look, I'm not going to always be here to do this. But anyway, he downloaded the Reveal app, and uh, I told him the other day, I said, man, man, you, I said, this place is talking about Thunder Hollow. has got more turkeys than any place I've ever seen. He said, yeah, I've been seeing them every day. He's been looking at them every day, mm. you know, every day. He said, we need to go hunting out there. I said, yeah, we'll be out there. So uh, it's going to be a fun spring. And look, all of southwest Mississippi, I we had an unbelievable hatch two years ago, and um, we, this year I think we had a pretty good hatch, and we're seeing the benefits of those two good hatches right now. And it's, I'm not saying every area, but a lot of areas, it's as many turkeys as I've seen in my lifetime. Yeah, area, uh, areas that have good habitat, you mm-hmm. know, so that support turkeys right now are blooming. Even in the swamps everywhere, yeah. I uh, I talked to my guy on the uh, on the buffalo lease, and I said, hey, how much, I'm that guy who runs a deer hunting out there. I said, hey, how are my turkeys look? And he said, most I've ever seen. Wow, that's awesome. That's all I want to see. Yeah. It's going to be a fun spring. But um, getting back to the market predictions, um, I think we're going to have a good 2024. I think that um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be competitive. It's going to um, – I'm excited. Uh, you know, I, I said a goal. We're going to sell $100 million worth of property this year, and I think we're going to do it. We've got a, There's a lot of cash out there in the market right now. Financing, as we just said, is getting better, um, and I just think that there's a, a, a lot of positives going on. And when, no matter where you lean in Washington, you can probably figure out where I lean pretty easy. You know, um, hopefully we'll have a change of the guard up there, and uh, and I think that's going that's going to definitely be good. Um, I'm I'm excited about 2024. That's kind of, kind of how I wanted to end this thing. I think it's going to be really really good. I think that people are going to want to buy. We've got a new timber mill coming in our area, which is going to make timber prices go up. Um, you know we had a lot of bug problems with timber this year, and uh, you know people are getting that cleaned up. So maybe there's a little less inventory of trees on the market, which there's still plenty. I probably shouldn't even said that, but. <coughs> 
there's a lot of other opportunities that are coming about with carbon and things like that and government programs for people to make money on land. And uh, they're just not making any more of it, you know. So, you know, there's more people in the there's more people in the world than there was in 2024 than there was in 2023. And they're not making any more land. So if nothing else, that's why it's more valuable. If, if if nothing else, it's not even the same amount. You know, there's becoming less and less recreational land. Mm-hmm. You know, right. I guess You're it's right. the same amount of land, but it's less and less recreational, um, which is scary to think about where we'll be 100 years from now, you know. Mm-hmm. But the, here's here's the thing, you know, it's people, you know, you hear realtors say it all the time. It's always the time to buy. Mm-hmm. Here's what I know being just, you know, relatively new to it and everything. I follow a lot of people. Of course, Slade is a mentor. Scott is a mentor. But I follow a lot of the people. I follow the Chris Crones, the Ryan Pinedas, the Grant Cardones, all of the people who are actively putting millions of dollars into the real estate industry. I I saw a reel the other day from both Ryan Pineda and Chris Crone. Both of them lost millions this year. In 2023, they lost millions of dollars. And guess what they're doing in 2024? Up in the ante. They're buying more because they know that in the end, their average is going to be so far above Mm -hmm. zero that it's not going to matter. And so if they're not discouraged and moving away, even after a bad 2023, they're still buying in 2024, you'd be a fool to not you know, follow suit. I mean, it just, it's, it's always the right time to buy because the situation is ever evolving. And it's not only them. Um, I, there's companies, uh, I just worked on a big deal. There's a huge company out of Germany buying a large track of land in our area, Germany. And and so then when I started talking to some people about that, they said, yeah, this, this country that there's people from Germany buying here, there's people from China buying here. Not only is the Chris Crones and Grant Cardone's talking about, you know, how good real estate is right now. These other countries are doing it. And I'm talking about tens and twenties and thirties of millions of dollars yeah. of, of, of land. And they're not even buying it from a recreational standpoint. They're buying them from timber plays and things like that. And we know that in our area, timber's pretty good, but it's all about recreation. Right. And um, I don't know if you're out there and you're thinking about buying I know we say it all the time, and it sounds uh, uh, self-promoting, yeah. but really, it's the time to buy. And I always tell people this. I'm not asking you to do anything I'm not doing. I got a track of 100, I got almost 180 acres um, that I'm buying in Amit County, and I'm going to uh, sell at some point in the future right now. So I'm doubling down, too. I mean. And, and I'm working on it. Right, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on it. Slade and I are actually probably mm-hmm. going to go at some we point go this look at week or, or maybe next week and, and look at a couple of investment properties as well. Um, it's – it. I, I, I guess that's a good – you know, hey, we're not asking you to do anything that we're not doing ourselves. And look, all all aside, if, you, if your agent – isn't buying land himself he's asking you to do something he's not willing to put his money up to and there's a whole lot of them out there like that it's like oh you don't own any big tracks of recreational land but you're asking me to that sounds a little most most of them not only do they not even own any recreational ground they don't use it they Mm -hmm. don't hunt they don't ride on their four wheeler with their kids like and look there's nothing wrong with that i mean do whatever you enjoy doing but at the end of the day land especially recreational, if it's a big track, it's probably one of your biggest and most valuable from a lucrative standpoint assets. Don't trust that in the hands of someone who doesn't actively do those things. Well, if you just take it, let's just remove the land off of it. Okay. Would you want your stockbroker to invest in stocks that he wouldn't put his money in? Right. No, you wouldn't. You want the same ones that he does. You want the same ones that Nancy Pelosi does because she beats everybody. Yeah. Would you take, and let's just do this, would you take a vaccine that your doctor wouldn't take? It's a great point. It's the same thing. It's, yeah. it's, you know, it's like, if you wouldn't do it yourself, would, you know, if you wouldn't do it yourself, uh, you know, or, or they wouldn't do it with their money, and they're asking you to do it with their money. That's, uh, I, I, yeah. So we're not asking you to do anything that we, uh, we're not doing ourselves.